second if Carter Thomas would have just passed two kids. Well, yeah, don't I'm sure he was going as fast and doing as best as he could. Okay, he said well, he could have done better. Like, he wouldn't have let himself do it. He didn't know. Mm -hmm. Well, like, we were very mad. Well, still successful, and you have a lot to look forward to next year. That's awesome. Okay, third. Um, never mind. Okay. okay, our third and final um, review for measurement. And then hopefully tomorrow, we're going to start on our first real eighth grade science unit. Oh. So excited. Yes, to be done finishing up review. Um, I'm not going to go through this word for word. I, um, I'm going to kind of, I'd rather go through some examples. But take a look at this, kind of skim. So um, if, make sure that you're on the side that says graduated cylinder. On one side, you had the triple beam balance. On the reverse side, you have the graduated cylinder. Okay. We actually will do this, um, we'll need to do um, volume quite a bit next year for some of our labs. This year, not as much, but I still think it's good to do a quick little refresh just to keep it. If you keep hearing the same things over and over every year, a lot of times, you know, it'll start to stick a little bit better. So we will do this a lot next year. I can't think of any labs where we actually use it this year, um, but I could be wrong. Um, so one major thing, and I've heard a few of you say, do you mean lines or do you mean spaces? And I'm glad that you're trying to clarify that. Um, we have to make sure that we are looking at the spaces between each of these lines. All right, so this is our graduated cylinder. Okay, this is one of them. All right, and so you can see that there is usually numbers, and they usually go by a set increment. Right? Is it messed up or is it okay? I don't know. Oh, what is oh I thought you were looking at it. I got the sillies this morning. It's me. Um, so as you're looking at this, each space is worth the exact same amount, which is why it's called graduated. Graduated means like going up in set amounts. You think about um, like when you graduate from school, each grade that you went to had the same amount of year or same amount of days, right? supposed to be 180 school days. Now, we get that there's snow days and some randoms, right? But overall, you're not going to first grade for three months and then second grade for 15 months and then third grade for four months, right? We, we all know we're going for basically those nine months or those 180 days, right? And so each school year is a set amount of time. And so when you're done, you have graduated through that program, right? That schooling program. Well, it'd be not exactly 180 days because you also have to count the weekends. Oh. 180 school days. Oh. Yes, 180 school days. Yeah, so we're not counting weekends or holidays or summer break and things like that. Yeah. Same thing here. These are graduated cylinders, which is why they have that fancy name. They're a cylinder. But the graduated part means set amounts. And so you can see that this is going up by tens. But then there's also other lines in between and so those lines are separating spaces and so just like with the meter stick when we were looking at going from one centimeter to another um, we're going to look at spaces not lines because the lines can get messed up um, if you depending on how you're looking at it so the very first thing that you always have to do is figure out what each space is worth on the graduated cylinder um, unless the volume lands right on a line that has a number with it, that'd be the only time you would need to do that. Um, most of the time, though, it's going to be kind of in between certain numbers. And because of that, you have to make sure that, you know, you're able to figure out because not every graduated cylinder is the same, right? Another thing, kind of a practical way of looking at this. Does anybody remember how you are supposed to read a graduated cylinder? Like, what are you physically supposed to do or looking at as you're trying to find the volume? You can, like, like squat down a little bit. You can, like, good. Like, parallel eye contact with a object. Very good. I've never heard it called parallel eye contact, but that is exactly right. Get yourself eye level, right? And I love the idea that you said squat yourself down. Don't raise a cylinder up to meet your eyes because it might be unbalanced and it gives you more of a chance to like drop it, spill it, do something like that, right? So you get yourself eye level with like, if I am like right here at the 60, I would need to get right with the 60, okay? And I would need to change my level 
to make that happen. All right. Does anybody remember what that curve is called? Uh, sometimes the, the, the liquid looks like it's a curve. It's not a straight line. It starts with an M. It's also a ligament in your knee that sometimes people damage. Anybody remember what that curve is called? Zach? Ligament's called an MCL. It is an MCL. You want to look, check in this. How about meniscus? Oh, yeah, that's a funny it's word. Meniscus? Like biscuit? Yeah, meniscus. Meniscus. The meniscus. So the meniscus is the curve. And so we will look at, um, let me pull one up real quick. What? My Oh, actually. Oh, dang. So sometimes it, like with the wider cylinders, it just looks like a straight line, and that's fine. If it looks like a curve. Where'd this baby go? My bad. I want to. For example, in a 100 milliliter cylinder, there are 10 subgraduates between 50 and 60. Subgraduates? Okay, let me back this up for a second. Okay, so you can see, just like Jackson said, he is um, getting eye level with the liquid. Okay, from there, um, you have to read the bottom of this curve. On a cylinder like this, it's pretty much just going to look flat. There's a property um, of water called um, adhesion where the water molecules themselves will kind of stick, or the liquid molecules will stick to the side a little bit. And so it kind of pulls it up instead of it being like perfectly flat. The skinnier, the more narrow the cylinder itself is, the more you see that. And we have two or three where it does it really, really kind of intensely. It looks like a big U, okay? If you see that, your job is to read the bottom of that bubble or the bottom of that curve, all right? Because if you would read above it, you're actually accounting for all this extra that's not really volume, that isn't really liquid. And so if you do this, you're just leaving off just a little bit, and the scientific community has determined that that's the better part to be off on, to have it a little bit extra than a little bit less, I guess. So you always read the bottom of the curve. So you're not reading to this line, you're reading to this line, okay? The next thing that you have to do is you have to um, decide what each one of these spaces is worth. Notice that it has 50 written here and 60 written here. So if I count the spaces, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 spaces. If I count as lines, I might have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That would mess things up, okay? So here's what I um, always say to do. Find two of your given numbers. Given numbers mean numbers that I can physically read on the cylinder. There's going to be some numbers that are typed on there, right? So I'm going to read those, and from those, I'm going to subtract two of them that are just like right above each other, like right above or right below. 
So here I only have the, the 50 and the 60. If I had the 70, I could do 70 and 60. If I had the 40, I could do the 50 and the 40. It doesn't matter. Um, what you're gonna do is once you subtract two numbers that are like on top of each other in order, you're going to take that number and divide it by however many spaces you have. And that's gonna let you know how many spaces each space is worth, or right? what each space is worth, right? So if I have this, um, let me, I forgot I wanted to write on the board. Let me switch my settings super quick so that I can get rid of my tools. I thought I needed to write. Okay, there's my tool. So, and this is this is on your graduated cylinder um, cheat sheet. Everything I'm saying is right here for you. two numbers that are in order, so 60 and 50, do that subtraction. You are always more than welcome to use a calculator in here. There are calculators um, in a little pink tray by the windows. If they're not back there, then they might be up here, depending on if my physical science class is using them. Um, so but this is 10, right? None of this is going to be like super hard, but when we get to division, sometimes people get a little off. So I'm going to do my subtraction, and then I'm going to count how many spaces are between my two numbers and we counted and that was 10. So I have 10 milliliters, right? Because that's what this is, 10 milliliters. Notice how I capitalized the L for liter. And I have 10 spaces, right? What is 10 divided by 10? One. 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 So it's one milliliter per space. And to see if we're correct, count up by that amount. So if I start at 50, I should have 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. That's the hardest part about reading a graduated cylinder, is determining what each space is worth. So once you determine it, like say for this graduated cylinder, you don't have to do that every time. Like if this is the one you're using for the whole lab, then you know each space is worth one or two or whatever. Now. It's always going to be a, a logical, easy number. It's going to be like a 1, a 2, a 5, a 10, a 20, a 50. So it's always going to be a nice value. It's not going to be like 3 or 7, right? It's always going to be one of those kind of easy numbers, okay? Um, and so this is the process. And so I heard somebody being silly saying, oh, it's 2. Well, try to. So this would be... 50, 52, 54, 56, 58, 60, 62, 64, 66, 68. I should get to 70 and I don't. So that's like where you get that alarm bell in your head, like something feels off, right? And so if you don't get, uh, if you when you skip count by the value of each space, if you don't go from this one to this, you know you are off. Does this sound familiar? A little bit? Yeah. Good. All right. Let's look at a few examples. There we go. Um, okay, let's look at this one. All right? So give me two numbers that are going like right above each other. Give me two, Audrina. Pick any two numbers. And so this is the same, this is just the zoomed in view. What two numbers do you see? Okay, and what's another one? Sure. It doesn't have to be where the liquid is. It could be 900 and 800, it could be 300 and 200. It can be whichever two, because it's the same on this whole graduated cylinder. So you can pick any two that you want. So she said 700 and 600. When I do that, I get 100 milliliters. And what this is basically saying is that 
between my 600 and my 700, it's 100 milliliters. Notice how the 600 sits on the 600 line and that this 700, wait a minute, I did that wrong, didn't I? Let me and the 700 sits right on the line, right? So as you see this, um, I'm looking at this 100 milliliters and I see that it's broken into one, two, three, four, five spaces. So 100 milliliters divided by five spaces. When I do that division, what do I get? 20, okay. So we're saying that each space should be worth 20 milliliters. 20 milliliters per space. All right, so I'm gonna count and make sure that I'm looking at this correctly. So here's my 600 line. And then I have 620, 640, 660, 680. Yep, that does take me to the 700 line, All right? Again, I heard 25 also. So if we said it was 25, we'd say 625, 650, 675, 700, 725 does not get me to 700. So you would see that that's off. And then you're like, okay, I need to back up. I must have done my division or something wrong, okay? So if I'm looking at that, I should be able to now read my, my water level or my liquid level. So the 600 is right here. So the first space is 620. We also have 640. And then we're between like 640 and 660, right? So we know that it has to be at least 640 and a little bit more, right? So I don't know. We're... 640, it looks to me like we're closer to the 640, so I'm just gonna round to the 640. I can't say 642 or 643 or 644 because it's not to the single milliliter, like it's not that specific. And so I can't, like if I'm talking about a digit that I don't know, we call that a significant um, digit. Like, so we know it's exactly to the 40, but then the one, the 42, the 43, we don't know exactly. All right, so we're gonna go through, um, and this site, we're gonna kind of skip around a little. I wanna go to another one. Yeah, let's go to this one. All right. So here's another graduated cylinder. Because we're switching cylinders, we need to redetermine what each space is worth. Okay, so let's see. Audrey, give me two numbers that you see on this graduated cylinder. 9 and 8. So 9 minus 8 gives me 1 milliliter, right? So we're looking... Between this area, it's one milliliter. And then we're gonna decide how many spaces it is in that one milliliter. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So one milliliter divided by ten spaces. Point one. Point one. Very nice mental math. Point one milliliter per space. Okay, and so I'm gonna check that. Always check to make sure. So this line is the eight. 8.1, 8 8.2, 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, 8.8, 8.9, 9. So good, it is worth 0 0.1. So now I get to figure out what, he, what the actual reading is. And so this is my eight, and in my mind I know I'm two away from nine, so it's 8.8, .8. or I can go, 8.1, 8 8.2, 8 8.3, 8.4, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, 8.8. Okay? And so if I put that in, and I will have these little links in um, Google Classroom for you. So we have 8.8, .8, we'll leave it at zero. Okay? 
Um, all right, let's look at this one. Again, notice um, the number is sitting right on the line. Sometimes with our cylinders, you will see them um, where like the four would be written here and the five is written here, where it's like right, the line's kind of pointing at the number and sometimes you see it sitting on. So you have to kind of adjust yourself and, and try to see the way that it's arranged. All of these have been like you see here where they're sitting on the line though. Okay, so we're gonna um, try to figure out, give me two numbers that are on this cylinder that are in order. What do you think, Haley? What two numbers do you see? Four and five sounds good. All right, so four and five, so that's one milliliter, and we're gonna see how many spaces is in that one milliliter. So she said between four and five. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten spaces. All right, so what do we get? Point one again. So 0 0.1 or 0.1. And we're going to skip count, make sure we're going up by the right amount. So 4 is right here. So 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, 4.8, 4.9, 4.10, 4.11, 4.12, 4.13, 4.14, 4.15, 4.16, 4.17, 4.18, 4.19, 4.20